Dr. Emily Partridge is a co-inventor of that womb-like device and joins us now from our studio in Toronto. Thanks for joining us today. That's a pleasure. Quite an amazing accomplishment here. Tell me when you were thinking about this initially, initially what the idea was. Well, you know, as a physician training in Toronto, I spent a lot of time in neonatal intensive care units seeing the consequences of extreme prematurity. Um, it is an incredibly frustrating problem clinically because of how limited we are uh, in terms of what we can do to support these babies at present time. So really from the time of my earliest stages of medical training, I started looking into this uh, technology. And when the opportunity came to go to CHOP, which is a center of excellence for fetal surgery, um, I pitched this idea really with the belief that this offered a, an unprecedented opportunity to improve what we can do for these babies. Let's talk about what you can do, because right now uh, a baby born premature would go, I guess, into an incubator. What would be different about this? I'm going to call it a bio bag, but it's an artificial womb. That's correct. Uh, presently, um, infants that are born at the cusp of viability uh, are faced with a lot of problems because of how immature the organs are. Um, one of the biggest hits is the lungs. They're really not ready to breathe air yet. A fetus in utero uh, is surrounded by fluid and actually breathes that fluid. Um, this is part of how the fetus grows lungs and the muscles required to breathe. So when these little ones are born, quite often they're not able to support uh, ventilation on their own. They require intubation, connection to a mechanical ventilator for gas-based ventilation. And really what that results in is an arrest of lung development. So even in those patients who do survive, they are faced with a lifelong uh, limitation uh, due to the lung disease that results from this, uh, this intervention. What the artificial placenta represents uh, is really an environment where the fetus can continue to be submerged in fluid. The lung development can continue as it would in utero. Uh, and from what we've seen in the LAM studies, this translates to an astonishing uh, improvement in their lung maturation and function. How hard was it to create amniotic fluid for that, for that womb? Uh, it was challenging. <laughs> we looked at a lot of research on what constitutes amniotic fluid. Uh, we had a lot of dry runs and a lot of hours on the bench uh, trying to produce this. Um, the quantities required for the level of experiments to maintain an animal for four weeks requires uh, hundreds of liters of fluid. So um, even just working out how to make that much fluid in the lab was a challenge. Uh, but we uh, have been very gratified that we stuck with it. A lot of uh, earlier research efforts have said that it can't be done. We felt it was really important uh, to achieve fluid incubation in a sterile way. So that is one of the big innovations of this, this prototype. You mentioned uh, that inside the lamb would be uh, breathing the fluid. What about nutrition? So we feed the lambs as well through the circuit. They receive um, intravenous uh, protein, carbohydrates, and fats. And that's very similar to uh, what the neonates would be given presently in the NICU. All right, so let me ask you, because obviously you built this thinking uh, the animal would be in there for four weeks' time. Is there a possibility of expanding that time period so one day we could see sort of a fertilized egg grow in a womb, a created womb, to, to full maturation? We're asked that question a lot, and the answer is unequivocally no. Um, the early events in gestation really absolutely require a mom and a uterus, and um, any sort of postulation about carrying a pregnancy from embryogenesis through to the development of a fully formed fetus really is in the realm of science fiction right now. Our intention is to intervene for those babies which uh, are born far too soon but would have been resuscitated. Uh, so a 23 to 24 week gestation infant is one that uh, consensus of uh, intensivists would feel ethically uh, obligated to resuscitate and to bridge those infants to a later stage of development when their chances for survival are basically 100%. Wow. Dr. Emily Partridge joining us today from Toronto. Uh, she is one of the co-inventors of this artificial womb. Very interesting stuff. Uh, thank you for joining us. Congratulations on your work. Thank you very much. Have a good day.